Donald Trump spoke in Wildwood, New Jersey on Saturday. Interestingly, Wildwood, New Jersey is where we all went to in our senior prom a decade, decades ago. This event was completely unhinged. And it started off with, of course, a huge lie, claiming that there were 80,000 people attending this traveling fascist circus event that he calls a rally. What happened was one of these right-wing extremist propagandists, Benny Johnson, wrote, boom, 80,000 in attendance at Trump's Wildwood, New Jersey event. Then everybody cites the MAGA source. According to a source on the ground, there's an estimated 80,000 people in Wildwood today. Then RSBN, the right side propagandist network goes, 80,000 in attendance at Trump's rally in Wildwood. And so, you know, basically it's just one MAGA source lies about it, then they all pick it up, and then they all report on it. As Peter Henlein, a DeSantis supporter says, this is how a lie spreads. One MAGA account shares a completely made up number from an unnamed source. Almost immediately, every other MAGA account and publication instantly repeats the claim as absolute fact. Reality is completely ignored and they've got it down to science. Another conservative account, Unfiltered Boss, an actual conservative account here, uh, posted this and said, this is what the lower bowl of a basketball arena looks like. A basketball arena holds 17 to 20,000 people. Most arenas have three levels. Stop letting people lie to you so shamelessly. Start thinking critically. Well, the people who attended this traveling fascist circus event that Trump calls a rally in Wildwood, New Jersey, were not critical thinkers. Here is a Magadonian interviewer, as Unfiltered Boss says, um, that Trump is in striking distance of winning New Jersey. And he asks one of the attendees, what do you think about that? And then she goes, well, how do we know he didn't win in uh, 2020? Didn't he win New Jersey? Trump lost by 16 points in New Jersey in 2020. Here, play this clip. I've been asking people, Trump did not win New Jersey in 2020, but by the looks of this today, he's in striking distance. He's got to be in striking distance for 2024. I mean, do we know that he didn't win in 2020? Let's let's just be honest about yeah, that. Let's be honest. But right, right. but um, I mean, I, I think the people are coming out very strongly. They love him. They support him. Uh, you know, and uh, I think New Jersey is Trump country. One of these things about the events as well that Trump hosts is that. It's actually the same people who travel across the country and just follow him wherever he goes. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's people from New Jersey. I'm sure there are a bunch of locals who actually show up. But a lot of people travel and just follow him from place to place. Like, here's a group. Uh, again, hat tip to Unfiltered Boss here. I guess, as I said, a real conservative account saying a group of Magadonians saying that they drove all the way to New Jersey from Florida to see Trump. This is a common theme from Trump rallies. Most of the people who attend are not even from the area. Here, play this clip of these Magadonians. Much. We drove all the way up here from Southwest Florida, me yeah, and my buddy. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. from East Stereo, Florida. And Lehigh Acres right here. Yeah. yeah. I just see Palm Beach. Let me see. You don't believe me, this is my Florida line. <laughs> there you go. Let's not show the details, though. Yep. There you go. And then once uh, the event began, before Trump even spoke, it was just some really kind of odd and strange stuff. Here is um, some unknown speaker who was one of the acts that started uh, giving a speech. Like, I still don't, tell me if you know who this is. I, I'm not sure really anyone even knows who this is, but this was a speaker at the event who just went on forever telling this story that absolutely made no sense at all. See if you can try to make sense of this as Aaron Rupert says. I'm only gonna play you a short version of it because like, again, this is what's happening at these events. Let's show you this clip, play it. This man in the suit shuffled over, got into my pickup truck, and we started heading towards the city. He immediately asked me what my name was. I replied, Chris. He told me his name. And then he said, how old are you? I told him my age, which was 43 at the time. He told me his age. He said, what month were you born? I said, September. He said, when in September? I said, the 15th. And then at the end, the person who was speaking calls Donald Trump President Chump. Here, play this clip. 
President Donald J. Trump. Then you had the former governor of North Dakota, uh, Burgum. He spoke. And well, I'll just show you what he says. Play this clip. There's a longstanding American principle. And President Trump would never do this. We don't negotiate with terrorists. And again, with these Magadonians, these right wing extremists, these liars, these propagandists, they, they, everything they say is a lie. Donald Trump invited the Taliban to Camp David on the anniversary of September 11th. Donald Trump brags about his relationship with Kim Jong-un. Just think about this, though. Donald Trump invited the Taliban on the anniversary of 9-11 to Camp David. And then Donald Trump went around the Afghan government that was in place at the time and then freed 5,000 Taliban prisoners who then took over Afghanistan. It wasn't even a negotiation. Trump just gave him Afghanistan. And I'm sure Vladimir Putin was quite happy. By the way, you see right there those negotiations with the Taliban. Then you had somebody by the name of Mike Crispy speak. If you want to know who Mike Crispy is, he's a loser. Um, he lost in the Republican primary to Chris Smith, a, a more of an establishment conservative Republican from New Jersey. And as the headline says here from 2022, Crispy, the person who I'm about to show you, creamed by Smith in 4th District GOP primary. Longtime incumbent prevails over several primary challengers, and he just destroyed Crispy. But here's the loser that they have on stage. Uh, the losing, rep he's like a podcaster or something. Here he is. This is Crispy. Play this clip. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you saw the recent polls, but President Trump is about to take the lead in New Jersey. It turns out that the great people of New Jersey don't like higher taxes, they don't like foreign wars, and they don't like a president who can't stay awake all day. And then you had uh, New Jersey Congress member Jeff Van Drew, who, well, I'll show you what he says first, and then we'll fact check and play this clip. We are here because we remember where we were four years ago. We remember four years ago when we had a great economy and we see what's happening right now in an economy that's faltering. The unemployment rate four years ago at this exact time was over 13%. It's now under 4%. By the way, you remember four years ago to the day when Donald Trump was asked about the unemployment rate that it could reach as high as like 20%? Donald Trump mishandled COVID. Donald Trump mishandled all of this. Remember what he said? Play the clip. Let me ask you about the tremendous hurt in this country. There are 30 million Americans who are unemployed. You don't need me to tell you that. We're expecting the new unemployment rate this week. There have been forecasts, 15, 16, 17 percent. One of your advisors projected an unemployment rate of 19 percent. That's nearly one in five Americans <laughs> without a job. How bad is this going to get? Well, that is what it is. Uh, and, you know, it's very interesting. And since we're talking about what went down four years ago to this day, you remember when uh, Donald Trump was asked this about former President Obama? Play the clip. Go ahead, Phil. Mr. President, in one of your Mother's Day tweets, you appear to accuse President Obama of the biggest political crime in American history by oh. far. Those were your words. What crime exactly are you accusing President Obama of committing, and do you believe the Justice Department should prosecute him? Uh, Obamagate. It's been going on for a long time. It's been going on from before I even got elected, and it's a disgrace that it happened. And if you look at what's gone on, and if you look at now all of this information that's being released, and from what I understand, that's only the beginning. Uh, some terrible things happened, and it should never be allowed to happen in our country again. 
And you'll be seeing what's going on over the next, over the coming weeks. But I, and I wish you'd write honestly about it. But unfortunately, you choose not to do so. Yeah, John, please. Crime. What is the crime exactly that uh, you're accusing him of? You know what the crime is. The crime is very obvious to everybody. All you have to do is read the newspapers, except yours. Uh, John, please. Yeah, Mr. President. Hmm, so I thought Donald Trump was saying that there should be absolute immunity. But apparently in 2020, that wasn't uh, the case, nor could he articulate what crimes he was even talking about. Four years ago to the day, Donald Trump, uh, as COVID was spreading out of control throughout the country and there was insufficient testing, Trump declared victory. Also four years ago to this day, because the MAGA Republicans speaking at Wildwood want to talk about four years ago. Let's show you this clip. Challenge and hardship and danger. America has risen to the task. We have met the moment and we have prevailed. Americans do whatever it takes to find solutions, pioneer breakthroughs, and harness the energies we need to achieve a total victory. Day after day, we're making tremendous strides with the dedication of our doctors and nurses. These are incredible people. These are brave people. These are warriors. Okay, you want to also talk about four years ago. How about what Donald Trump said uh, um, that basically everyone's dying of lots of things. So who cares about COVID? That's what Donald Trump said four years ago. Who cares? He basically said everyone's dying. There are lots of other things people are dying of. Play the clip. Earlier today, you tweeted that Democrats are moving slowly for political purposes. Uh, why do you believe that their motive is politics rather than public safety? And how do you respond to criticism that you're also motivated by politics to try to grow the economy ahead of the election? Well, I think that if you look at Pennsylvania as an example, uh, if you look at various other states, I'm, I won't get into them. Uh, the people want to go back. The numbers are getting to a point where they can. And there just seems to be no effort on certain uh, blue states to get back into gear. And the people aren't going to stand for it. They want to get back. They're not going to stand for it. They want our country open. I want our country open, too. I want it open safely, but I want it open. Don't forget, people are dying the other route. You can go with the enclosed route. Everything's closed up. You're in your house. You're not allowed to move. People are dying with that, too. You look at drug addiction. You look at suicides. You look at some of the things that are taking place. People are dying that way, too. You could make the case it's in even greater numbers. So it's a... Uh, it's a situation that some people, and I've noticed that some states could be moving uh, more quickly and also at the same time safety. Look, safety is paramount, but people are dying in the lockdown position too. And everybody understands that. They're just starting to find out. And look at what's going on with drugs and look at what's happening with suicides. Yeah, please, please go ahead. So that's where we are right now. We'll keep you posted, of course. We'll get another video of Donald Trump's speech. I just want to show you how things went off the rails before Donald Trump spoke. The lies that are told about crowd size, how easy they are to disprove, the type of people there that are there, the speakers. And we'll fact check these one by one. Don't you worry. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Have a good one. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.